everyone. Welcome, as always, to our wonderful Latino 101 class. <coughs> Excuse me, to our wonderful Sephardic Digital Academy uh, and the Sephardic Jewish Brotherhood of America. So it's good to have you on this wonderful inauguration day. I hope you all are enjoying it, um, either in the United States or around the world. I hope you're celebrating as well. Um, a few quick announcements, as always. For those of you um, who have missed any classes or materials in the past, make sure to check out the website where we posted all the previous class videos and materials, homeworks, PowerPoints, et cetera. You can go to sephardicbrotherhood.com slash Ladino 101. That's sephardicbrotherhood.com slash Ladino 101. And it'll, every week we post the videos, we post the materials, so you'll have them and you can refresh yourself for the next class as well. Um, this class is gonna be a very special one. As you many remember, we're gonna learn some, some of the, um, let's say, more colorful um, words and phrases in the Ladino language I think many of you grew up with and uh, will be a bit fun. So without further ado, I'll hand over the floor to Karen. Thank you, thank you, Ethan. Welcome everyone, welcome everyone. And thank you for being there instead of watching the inauguration or maybe you're watching from with one eye and being here with the other eye. Okay, that's okay, that's okay, thank you. I mean, it's, it's a good turnout anyway. So I hope, uh, you know, this inauguration <laughs> will be uh, the good news for um, everyone and for good news for everyone in the world, hopefully. Okay. Amen, amen, amen. Okay. So today we're going to have some fun. Um, <laughs> I, well, I had fun preparing the lesson, so um, we're going to have some fun. Let me um, start. Well, let me tell you that um, this language of ours, Ladino, has when it, when we talk about a language it's not just you know the grammatical sentences you know he comes or we come they go they come but in fact a language it, itself is the um uh is the carrier of the people's imaginations uh the people's uh, character way of thinking way of life you know it's it's a whole culture that is hidden or, or not really hidden in the language itself so it's something really beautiful when you learn the intricacies of the language apart from the grammar and sentences that you want to uh, really talk about you know in the language correct language it's okay but Something that is very special to the Sephardic culture is the proverbs and idioms that we have. I mean, we know that our elders always had an idiom or a proverb to say at every kind of situation. So, um, and of course, uh, during the 530 and more years that they lived on these lands, you know, the Ottoman Empire, and the Balkans, Turkey today, Palestine, North of Africa, <laughs> everything. Um, obviously, they had a lot of bad moments as well. So they have um, a lot of proverbs and idioms uh, describing these bad moments. And we have a lot of bad words and a lot of very picturesque words as well. Let us start, if you like. Okay, um, slide shows, play from start. Okay, here we go. So, bienvenidos a la lición número seis. Espero que estáis todos bien. En buena salud. Sin la corona desgraciada. Okay. And then, esta lición es para embezar. Palabras negras. So, this lesson is to learn bad words, kifures, swear words, maldiciones, curses, y anecdotas del bel parabasho. So, and spicy anecdotes from the waist down. Okay, so you're going to have fun. And don't be shocked. I mean, this is part of the culture. So, you know, and I only had 
you know, an hour's worth of material to put in here. There's so much more. I mean, you can't believe the amount of material that there is there. <laughs> and it's all there in the books and, and things. So, <laughs> okay. So let us start with some mild insults, if you like. We usually insult people with animal names. So when we say lonso, it means bear. It's the animal bear, but it means stupid, okay? And then there's also, <coughs> there's also the idiom that says, oof, es un lonso en pies, meaning this is a bear on two feet. I don't know where that comes from, but I've been thinking about it today. And I thought, you know, in Turkey, um, or maybe on Ottoman lands, um, there were some street um, kind of, uh, I don't know how to, well, what to call them, street uh, performers, let us say, that made bears get up on their two feet. They would come with a darbuka and, and the bear would kind of go belly dancing. So these were uh, street performers that made the bears perform actually. And they, poor animals, I mean, uh, it wasn't, well, it was, you know, it was enjoyable to see them, the bears, you know, belly dancing. Uh, it's, fortunately, it's not uh, popular anymore. Uh, but they had the bears on chains. I mean, poor things. And they would go playing the darbuka, and the bear would go, you know, belly dancing. Um, so maybe, I don't know, they say uh, a bear on two feet, that's what they did. They went up on two feet. Um, so if you want to tell a person that he's stupid, then you tell either, or talk about them. Un lonso. Okay. Then, gameo. Gameo is um, camel. I don't know why we designate a person <laughs> as a gameo is stupid, but we mean stupid, okay? We want to call it a gameo, okay? Un gameo, ooh, doesn't understand anything, stupid. Another one is, so we go down, asno, but I'm going to get back to the asno part. And ass, it means an ass, a, a donkey. Uh, it means really stupid, very, very stupid. And uh, perro, now here we, you know, um, it means dog, obviously, but the um, other meaning is, ooh, perro. Devilish, uh, not a very good person, but not a very bad person either. I mean, devilish kind of person, you know, cunning and uh, um, es un perro. I mean, uh, very, very kind. I don't know why, though, they uh, designated perro with such a meaning, no idea, but that's the way it is. Okay, now we come to the juicy parts. Okay, a most important word that is used very frequently is culo. Or oh, you have to know culo in order to know Ladino. I mean, it's one of the most important words. In Spanish too, I mean, culo is very important. I mean, Spanish people use it everywhere. And in Ladino also, we use culo everywhere. So where, for example, you keep calling a person and there's no answer, you say, oh, mi culo, no answer. <laughs> when somebody looks down on you, you say, ay, mi culo, or oh, mi culo me sea, meaning, oh, what an ass, you know, what an asshole, really, <laughs> right? I mean, there's, these are different meanings, but they're all used with culo, okay? So for something that keeps re repeating, it's, it's repeating and you want to say, oh, there's nothing there, say mi culo, nothing. Okay, so now from, from these books, there are two volumes of proverbs and uh, idioms a great, great work done by Fanny Ender and Becky Bardavit, who collected thousands of proverbs and, and idioms. Um, uh, there's a whole section on culo. So these are the 
just there's a little, you know, um, some, some examples that I chose. So when somebody does something daring, you say, ooh, se quede culo. I mean, you need a good ass to, to do it, you know, you, instead of saying you need balls, okay? So here you say, you, I, se quede culo, you need ass, okay? When you work for very little money, you say you work for un culo de pipino. So pipino is a cucumber. So what you get as a salary is just the cucumber's head or tail or whatever you call it, a cucumber's ass, okay? Or when somebody nags you all the time, and you say, me esta secando el culo. So she's drying my ass, which means, you know, really, oh, enough, enough. Me esta secando el culo. Then <clears throat> when somebody pretends to be sick, but they go, oh, oh, I'm very ill, I'm very ill. And then somebody asks, what's the matter with her? Usually it's a her. And you say, oh, tiene el culo en dos, meaning has his ass or her ass in two, meaning nothing really, because, you know, the ass is divided into two. So <laughs> it's a normal uh, state of affairs. Then if you want to describe someone that is really ugly, you say, ni en cara, ni en culo. Neither the face, neither in face, nor in ass, you know doesn't look anything right, you know, it's uh, ni en cara, ni en culo. Okay, then when someone cannot sit still, you know, there's a lot of people like that. My husband is one. He cannot sit in one place for more than two minutes. I will always get up, fidget, go, go here and there. So you say, there are a lot of things you can say, culo puntudo which means pointed as, means cannot sit down. Then tiene shishes en el culo, which means has needles, but you know, knitting needles, shishes en el culo, has needles in his ass. Tiene punchones en el culo, meaning has thorns in his ass. Or culo de mal asiento, an ass that cannot sit still. So there's all these tasty expressions you can choose from in order to describe a person that cannot sit still. Then uh, when somebody misunderstands what you say, uh, you, you, you can say, oh, lo tomo por el culo, means he understood it from the ass, which means just the opposite of what I meant and didn't really understand what I was saying. So lo tomo por el culo. Then when you want to tell someone to go <clears throat> F word themselves, you say, come mi culo, eat my ass. You know, that is so common. I mean, <laughs> people use it all the time, come mi culo. And when you want to describe two very intimate friends, you say, dos culos y una nalga, two asses in one bottom meaning, oh, they are inseparable. Dos culos y una nalga. And then when someone says something but means something entirely different, you say they are, well, they said something del culo al puso, meaning from the bottom to the thumb. Puso is thumb. So really, uh, <laughs> they meant to say one thing, but they completely said something else. Del culo al puso. No tiene nada de dar y haber con esto. It has nothing to do with it. Okay. You see what a wonderful literature of culo we have. There's still a lot more, let me say. This is just, you know, choice things that I, I uh, chose from, from the books and what I, you know, my father was a great uh, user of these kinds of expressions. So that's how I learned. And then, now um, let us look at some idioms with this illustrious word, culo. Okay, here you go. A harva culo que no pedo, beating up the ass that has not farted. And which means if you're punishing an innocent person and they say, why are you punishing me? I didn't do anything. 
a harvaculo que no pedo. Oh, what is this? I didn't fart. So why are you, you know, beating, beating my ass up? <laughs> and, um, oh, another one. Yes, I like this one also. A cada uno le gole bien el pedo de su culo. To every person, uh, his own, to every person, the fart of his own ass smells good. Okay, so, you know, if, if you are the one who is doing the bad thing, you won't think it is stinking, really, you think it's okay. That's what it really means. Or you can talk about a person who is very nosy, and cada chucal mete su culo. Chucal is a um, um, chamber pot, yes, of course. And cada chucal, in every chamber pot, he will put his ass, which means he is a very nosy person and uh, he will interfere with everything. Then you have a very sexist one saying, espantate de mujer que tiene el culo en bajo. Beware of a woman who has her ass near the ground, meaning beware of short women. My father used to say that not only for women, but for men as well. And he would, oh, if his ass is near the ground, beware, <laughs> which means beware of short people. Then, uh, this one I like, la sartén dicho a la caldera, vate culo preto, vate mazaya. So the pot said to the pan, black ass, go away. So, you know, people can see their own kind of dirty things, dirty asses. <laughs> they tell other people uh, about it. Then, now let us look at some swear words and curses that are really popular. So, if you want to just call somebody an asshole, you just use the word for donkey, as no, as no. Then if you want a bit more emphasis, you say as no cuadrado, means as squared, means, you know, really, really, you know, multiplied. Then you can say as no hijo de un as no, as son of an ass. So really comes from family of genetics, genetics wise, they are, an, they are asses. Or as no hijo de otro, as son of another, meaning, oh, you know, really bad, really bad. Um, hacer as nedades, now doing donkey things, meaning doing stupid things. Or as nearse, now I'm sure, I'm sure uh, people who have had grandparents have heard them say, no te as neyes, don't become an ass, you know, and uh, don't, don't, don't go above yourself, you know, as nearse. So <laughs> you even have a verb. Then, okay, curses. Now, la estrella que te caiga. May your star fall, meaning that's a bad curse, actually. May your star fall, meaning may you die, probably. Las <laughs> que te caiga. Or al genem que te vayas. May you go to hell. Now, genem, this is a Turkish word for hell. Al genem que te vayas. I, my mother used to say that a lot. La boca que te se vaya por el yan. May your mouth slant sideways, which would be a way of saying, may you get a, uh, 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 I don't know, uh, may you be paralyzed or something. Um, Yan is again for the Turkish word for sideways. May your mouth slant sideways. May you be like this, you know. Now this one is nice. It's a good curse. Ketengas. Y después, no más. May you have, and then may you have not. So it's worse than actually, if you didn't have in the beginning, okay, you didn't have. So you didn't know better. But if you had a lot of things in the beginning, 
and then you lost everything and you didn't have any more, then that is a curse. That is a curse because you feel really bad. Or this one, que te veiga loca echando piedras. <laughs> May I see you mad throwing stones. I mean, really mad, just, you know, throwing things here and there. This is also very nice. Tus piojos que tengan piojos. May your lice have lice, meaning may you be full of lice. You know, it's really, you know, really bad, really bad. Okay. You know, if you memorize all these curses and things, and if you, you know, talk to people like that, they will be amazed by your incredible knowledge of Ladino. You know, they will be amazed. How on earth would you know these things, you know? Then, other great curses. Oh, look at this one. This is, oh. Que te caigan los dientes y que te quede uno para que te duele. May all your teeth fall and may you have one left so you may feel the pain. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine this? I learned, uh, th this comes for, uh, to us from Sofia Danon of Bulgaria. Um, she's a lovely, lovely old lady um, from the Jewish community of uh, Sofia. And uh, I've met her and she's wonderful. She knows so much. Um, I love this. Que te caigan los dientes y que te quede uno para que te duele. Oh, wonderful. Then, ida sin vinida. En cada paso, una caída. So, um, usually for people you don't like at all, you say, and they say, oh, I'm going. And then you say, ida sin vinida, you know, may you go and never come back. Uh, but here it's even, <laughs> it's even worse. May you go, never come back. And with every step you take, may you fall. <laughs> it's just, I mean, just imagine the kind of imagination these people had, you know. Then here's a word that Spanish people have forgotten nowadays. I mean, I have asked tons of Spanish people, and they have forgotten what the, this word means. Uh, I have a dictionary from the Real Academia from the 16th century, I think. And there it is, it's there. Huerco, huerco means devil. Uh, so, el huerco que te lleve. We have a lot of idioms, expressions, etc. with huerco. So um, we use it a lot to mean devil. And el huerco que te lleve meaning may the devil take you, take you away. Um, here, you, you, again, uh, today, this word forca, oops, sorry. Uh, forca, of course, it has lost the F sound and in Spanish today, it's written with an H that is not pronounced. So it's orca, la orca, which means, um, you know, the place where they hang people. Okay, so may I see you at the hanging place. So may you be hanged. Now, here is another one that has to do with the culture. Uh, it should be not lo ver, uh, you, okay. lo veré los pies por la entrada. May I see him with his feet towards the door or towards the entrance. Now, in our culture, it is uh, unlucky to sleep in a bed that looks toward the door, towards the door, because that is how they lay the, the dead down. So in fact, when you say, may I get to see his feet towards the door, uh, you mean, may I see you dead? Because that's the only time when you will be laid down uh, facing the door, because that's how they're going to take you away. So here's another 
bit of the culture um, in a proverb or a curse, let us say. Then, ah, this is also nice. <laughs> okay. Que te veiga chincha apegada a la pared. May I see you as a chinch, chinch or bed bug stuck to the wall. I mean, just just imagine this. I mean, it's so <laughs> it's a great picture of may I see you as a chinch or a bed bug stuck to the wall because what did people do when they saw chinches on the wall? They just, you know, they killed them uh, with a shoe or something and they got stuck on the wall, obviously, their carcasses. Or again, a mudición que te caiga, meaning may you not be able to speak. May you lose your voice. May you not be able to speak. A mudición is mute, going mute. A mudición que te caiga, may you lose your voice. Here's another one. I like this one a lot. El capac que te caiga, or el capac que le caiga. Capac is a Turkish word, obviously. Uh, and, and it means, may he have the lid fall on his head. Meaning, capac que le caiga, nothing very good. Nothing very good. You know, if the lid falls on your head, you don't feel very well. And another one, acompañado de jajamim que salga. May he leave accompanied by the rabbis, which means going towards the cemetery. Que lo vega enforcado, oh, this is really bad. Ooh, que lo vega enforcado de los huevos. May I see him hanged by his balls. I mean, ooh, can you imagine the torture? Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is really bad. <laughs> and this is also very bad. Que no carrej seis meses. May you not take a shit for six months. Can you imagine? I mean, this in a culture where every morning when people get up, they pray, they do, they say a beraha, you know, a, a thank you prayer that says, thank you, God, that I have all my holes open and working. And it's a must before you can say any kind of prayer that you go and empty your intestines first, and then you can say the rest of the berachas, you know? And from this kind of culture, you have this curse. May you not take a shit for six months. I mean, can you imagine the horror? <laughs> It's absolutely horrifying, <laughs> but okay, that's how, that's what they did say. Now, here are, you know, a just bouquet of idioms that I like. Uh, oh, I wrote this in, in Ladino. Por una mujer que habla mucho, decimos, for, for a woman who talks too much. La boca le va como culo de palaza. Her mouth moves like the ass <laughs> of a goose. Okay, so they go chick, 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 so they talk too much, too much. Por una persona que no entiende las cosas muy fácilmente y que tiene la cabeza un poco dura, tenemos varias expresiones. Okay, for somebody who doesn't understand very easily and who has a bit of a hard head, we have various expressions. Cabeza de leño, meaning wooden head. Or cabeza de apio. Now, apio is celeriac. I don't know if you have it uh, in the States, but we in Turkey usually eat the, the root, which is inside the earth. And it's, um, it's really hard when you try to peel it. It's really, really hard. And what is more, uh, when you peel this, the the inside, um, the middle in the inside is empty. You have to take that out because it doesn't, it's not, it's not, you can't eat it. So imagine telling somebody that their head is like a celeriac, which is very hard and plus with an empty middle. <laughs> you know? Then you have, look at this picture. 
Lenio de Banio, Hamamodunu. Now, Lenio de Banio, Banio here means the uh, Turkish Hamam, the Turkish bath. And to uh, in, in the old times, they used to heat up the, the, the Turkish bath with big trunks of wood because it was a huge building and they, they had a big, big, big furnace or whatever, and they used to throw in big trunks of wood. So here you have Lenio de Banio in Ladino, and the same thing translated into Turkish, Hamamodunu, uh, which emphasizes, you know, it doubles the meaning and saying, you know, what a blockhead, you know. And then another fruit, Bimbrio is quince. Now, I don't know if you have tried to peel a quince. It's very, very, very hard. It is a very hard fruit. So, you know, quince, when you say cabeza de bimbrio, means woof, woof, really hard headed, very hard headed. Then you have maredo, which means stupid. Then you have arvole. Now, I don't know why they use, the, arvole is tree. I don't know why they use a tree to, to, to say that somebody is stupid, but that's what they do, that's what they do. And then you have, actually, this is what they meant, kutuk, uh, kutuk, oops, sorry, uh, kutuk, which means the trunk of the tree. So really hard, really hard. Okay. How are you liking it so far? Good? Okay. Okay. A person who is very intelligent, una, uno muy inteligente es huerco. So the devil, you know, very, very intelligent. Very intelligent. Oh, es huerco. Then we have a saying that says, el huerco quitó el pie y él o ella lo metió. Now this means the devil took off his foot and that person put it instead of the devil's foot, meaning he stepped into the devil's shoes, actually. That would be the <laughs> exact the translation. So meaning uh, very, very cunning, very clever, very intelligent and, uh, Mm, you know, a very intelligent, but a kind of intelligence that, are, that is also um, not, not that kosher, you know, not that kosher. Now, un lugar muy lejos, somewhere that is really, really far away, is, we say, this is nice, ande se arrapa el huerco con turbin. <laughs> now, where the devil shaves with binoculars. I mean, just, just the, the imagery is wonderful, where the devil shaves with binoculars, you know. <laughs> Turbin comes from the Turkish word durbin, obviously, and um, <laughs> I really like it. And usually they do not, uh, people do not use this end part, but they usually say, oh, it's very far away, ande sarap al huerco, ande sarap al huerco, you know, very, very far away, where the devil shaves. And then you have, cuando uno promete de hacer una cosa y después se arrepiente de hacerlo, when somebody promises to do, to, to do something and then just, you know, doesn't do it in the end, we say, se pichó, he peed himself. So, se pichó. Pichar is to pee, actually. And uh, here's a very interesting anecdote. My group and I were, um, uh, you know, rehearsing for a concert uh, one day. And there, there was another group rehearsing and they had some um, people from the Roman, uh, uh, community, let us say, um, which we would say Zinganos. Uh, so suddenly one of them said in Turkish, but, uh, but used the word Pishar. He, he said, I'm going to Pishar. I said, what? 
wait a minute, wait a minute. How do you know this word? I said, oh, it's from the Roman language. So I thought that was particularly interesting because Pichar, I think it comes from the Portuguese word uh, because it's not Spanish, it's, I think, Portuguese. So that's an interesting, you know, people are being affected from other cultures as well. And, oh, oh, I like this one very much. Cuando uno hace las cosas al dal cabo minuto, when somebody does something at the very last moment, we say, en la hora la pichada, fragua la privada. When he wants to pee, he builds the toilet. <laughs> so really at the very last minute, I mean, he's just going there and then he starts building the toilet because there's no other place to go. Okay, now we come to, um, this is the book from which I uh, got these anecdotes and they can all be found in our, found in our um, all these books, they can be found in our uh, istanbulsephardiccenter.com website. Uh, this, this book is just absolutely wonderful because um, Matilda Cohen Sarano, she's uh, the compiler of all these anecdotes. She's a great little lady. And um, years ago, this, this was when, I, when we first founded the Sephardic uh, Culture Center in Istanbul. Uh, she had already published a few books, all very, you know, uh, nice. So one day I was visiting uh, Yerushalayim and I stayed at her house because we're great friends. And we, and, uh, we keep going, you know, she, she tells me an anecdote and I tell her an anecdote, but they're all kind of spicy. And um, I said, do you have a lot more of these anecdotes? She said, ooh. Loads more. I said, do you want to publish them? She said, would I dare? Because her, her husband, uh, may he rest in peace, he was a rabbi, the sweetest guy, sweetest guy, Aaron Cohen, uh, the sweetest guy. And uh, she said, you know, would I dare to publish? I said, well, if you don't dare, I would dare. And this was the first book that we published when we founded our center. And it's, uh, oh, it's great fun. It's, it's <laughs> really great fun. Okay, so who wants to read the first anecdote? Do I get a uh, volunteer? Miriam, yes, go ahead. Susana y la Rubisa. Okay, do you know what Rubisa is? Uh, Rubisa is the wife of a rabbi. So, she's the religious one. Un día que las mujeres están esperando en el hammam a la tevilá, están en el rango con todas y la mujer del hammam y la y Susana la putana. <laughs> okay. So, let's say, let's see what does what does it say? <clears throat> one day Oh, I'll try. One day that the women are waiting at the bath. Yes, la the te I'm yeah. sorry, the Turkish bath. Yeah, to do the tevila. Tevila you, means. I mean, do you know what the Turkish bath is? Y yes. Uh, it, it's kind of it's a, a big building where women, women or men, I mean, they they used to go in different hours or in different places. Uh, and it's very, very hot. I mean, really, really hot. It's like, I don't know. Uh, I don't know the degrees, but it's, it's very, very, very hot. Mm -hmm. And there, uh, the women go in and in the nude. And there are people there that are, well, in the women's part, there will be women, what we call telecas. Now, telecas have these... Uh, sponges but not really sponges with um hmm, they're kind of uh, they come out of the sea they 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 have um uh, they they scratchy things scratchy things that used to they used to wash you with those and when they washed you i mean it's like they took out the outer skin from you okay 
Uh, and it, it, we call them macarones because they used to go like this, like this, and all these, you know, macaroni type uh, kind of skin, usually black because of the dirt, came out. And uh, so for Tevila, obviously, it's probably Friday night or something. Uh, all these women are waiting and they are waiting in a row obviously, with all the women and the wife of the hacham, of the rabbi, and Susan, the whore. They're all there. They're all waiting to be washed. Go, go ahead. Susana tiene el taz y el piludo en la mano y quiere pasar adelante. Quiere pasar adelante. Okay, she's got the bowl there's a bowl usually with a, a soap and things you put there. And el piludo is that thing that I, I told you um, that comes, it's a sponge that comes out from the sea, but it scratches, it, it really washes you well. <laughs> y quiere pasar adelante, which means? She wants to cut in line? Yeah, she wants to go ahead, yes. She wants to go in front, yes. And then? La mujer del jajam le dice, ¿Cuálo? Aquí hay rango. No, no, está... ¿Cuálo? ¿Cuálo? Meaning she is shocked. ¿Cuálo? ¿Cuálo? Aquí hay rango. Nos están esperando en casa. Yeah. What does that mean? The, the haham's wife says, what? There's a line here. They're waiting for us at home. And then... Rubisa, Rubisa, le dice Susana. A ti te espera uno. A mí me esperan cien y uno. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Rabbi or Rabbi's wife, Rabbi's wife, Susanna says, one is waiting for you. A hundred and one are waiting for me. <laughs> exactly. So, okay, Marsha, you go ahead and read it again. Uh, unmute yourself first. Un día que las mujeres están esperando en el jamán a la actividad, jamán están con todos y la mujer del jamán. I, I can't see the rest of it. It's, uh, it's covered. You, you take it a bit, a bit down and you say, están en el rango. Están en el rango con todos y la mujer de jamán. Mujer, mujer, mujer. Mujer del Hamam y Susana. Ha no, Hamam and Hamam ha are two different things. Okay. Hamam. Ha oh, it should be Hamam. Ha I, I know that one. Hamam ha y Susana la putana. Susana tiene el taz y el piludo en la mano y quiere pasar adelante. La mujer del Hamam. No, le... del Hamam. Hamam, <laughs> Hamam. Ha Jajam le dice, ¿cuálo? Aquí hay rango. Mos están esperando. Rubisa revisa. En casa. Mos están esperando en casa. Esperando en casa. Rubia, Rubisa, Rubisa le dice Susana. A ti te espera uno. A mí esperan cien y uno. Cien y uno. Yeah, very good. Okay. Let us Go on. Oh. Okay. Si está bueno. Who wants to read this? Let me see some hands. Igal, I can see you. Do you want to read? Unmute yourself. Go ahead. Si está bueno. Si está bueno. Si está bueno. Moshiko está caminando en la calle. Los vecinos le demandan, ¿Dónde te estás indo, Moshiko? No me estoy indo. No, 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 no. No, me estoy indo al bordel. 
Okay, do you know what a bordel is? Bordel is a whorehouse. He's going to the whorehouse. Okay. Al bordel. Al bordel? Ideke ye vas conti el el talet. Eh, si este bueno. Me quedo fina Shabbat. Okay, so translate. Si este bueno. No, 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 the whole thing. Ah, ah, tamam. Yes, yes. Uh, Moshiko is uh, walking in the street. Kaye uh, in, uh, in the street. Uh, his uh, neighbors. No, uh, he sees the uh, neighbors and uh, they ask, uh, Moshiko, where are you going? And he says, uh, no, 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 doesn't mean anything. It's just a way of speaking, you know. No, me estoy indo al bordel. And he's going to the uh, whorehouse. Whorehouse. And he says, you are going to the uh, whorehouse? Then why do you have your talent with you? Yes, why do you have your talent with you? Es está bueno. Me quedo. Fina Shabbat is end of Shabbat, I guess. So uh, Shabbat. until, until, until. Huh. So if um, it is good. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> if it is good, you will st stay till the end of Shabbat? Till Shabbat, yes. If it is good. He will stay. So he won't, he won't waste any time coming back to get his toilet for the Shabbat, but he was in the whorehouse in the meantime, you know, the whole time. But uh, he, he doesn't forget his religious duties <laughs> that he has to go and pray. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's our culture. It's wonderful. <laughs> okay. Somebody else who would like to read? Um, who raised hand? Just a minute. Yes, Rosie. Rosie. Yes, Rosie. You, re you read. Okay. Uh, si está bueno, Moshiko está caminando en la calle. Los vecinos le demandan. ¿Ande te estás indo, Moshiko? No, me estoy indo al bordel. ¿Al bordel? ¿De qué llevas con ti el talet? Eh, si está bueno, me quedo fin a Shabbat. Exactamente. Esto es. Si está bueno, me quedo fin a Shabbat. Ok. Shall we go on? Ok. So, who wants to read? But this is a good one too. <laughs> it's a very good one actually. Terry, yes, go ahead. Okay. Mira mi jour. Una mujer dice a la vecina, mete un perde a la ventana de tu camareto de echar. Para que... Oh, it should be camareta, I'm sorry. Camareta de I... echar. Para que se tape lo que está afitando y yo no te veré cada vez que estás con tu marido. Ok, that's a long one. So, <laughs> let's translate. Una mujer dice a la vecina. One neighbor says to, well, a no, woman a says woman, to her neighbor. Mete un perde, this is a Turkish word that means curtain. So, mete un perde a la ventana de tu camareta de char. What does that mean? Um, put a curtain on your window of your bedroom. Mm -hmm. Para que se tape lo que está afitando. Um, Tapar is cover. Uh, lo que está afitando. Mm. Afitando is occur, happen. Ah, para, yeah. So that it covers what uh, what is occurring, and in, I don't in, see in each fact, time your husband. Each time you are time with your husband. Husband, yeah. Okay. Cada vez que estás con tu marido, you know, every time that you are with your, your husband. husband. Okay. So le, then, le dice la vecina, a la otra vez que vas a mirar a mi ventana. Métete antojos y verás que yo, yo no estoy con mi marido, ma con el tuyo. Ok. <laughs> And the, the, the woman says to the neighbor, the next no, the, time... No, no the, uh, the neighbor tells uh, her. Uh, ok, 
Ti se la vizina. So no, the lady tells her no, no, it's, each it's not the next time. Lady, it's lady ze la vizina. So lady ze la vizina. Tells her the neighbor. Okay. Yeah. So the uh, next time. And the next time you will look at my, look, look through my window, put on your uh, glasses. So Anto Anto glasses. Yes, Antojos is a very old a Spanish word that means glasses. Uh, so, and you will see that I'm not with my husband, but with yours. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, that's life. <laughs> okay, very good. Who else would like to read this one? It's a good one, though. Deborah, yes. Go ahead. Uh, you have to unmute yourself. I, do, I don't know if you did, but. Deborah, Debbie, unmute yourself, please. Got it. See? Yes. Okay. Sí. Una mujer dice a la vecina. Not dice, dice. Dice, dice a la vecina. Mete un perde a la ventana de tu camareta de char para que se tape lo que está afitando. Y yo no te veré cada... No te veré, no te veré. Y yo no te veré cada vez que estás con tu marido. Le dice la vecina. A la otra vez que vas a mirar mi, a mi ventana, métete antojos y verás que yo no estoy con mi marido, ma con el tuyo. Exactly. Muy bien. Bravo, Debbie. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Ah, yes. This, <laughs> this is also a good one. Who would like to read this one? Can I see some hands? Come on. Yes, Betty. Go ahead. And Sibel Razón, you will read afterwards. Las Rosas del Marido. Mm -hmm. Dos amigas están sentadas jugando cartas. Okay, el so what, what, is going on? what is going on? Uh -huh. Dos amigas están sentadas jugando cartas. Two friends are sitting together and playing cards. Playing cards, yes. El súpito viene el marido de la balabaya con un gran de buqueto de rosas. Suddenly, the husband of the host comes in uh, with a big uh, bouquet of roses. Mm -hmm. La amiga le dice, ¿Qué mazal grande tienes tú? Mi marido nunca me, no me trae rosas en casa. The friend says, uh, what a lucky person you are, or yeah, yes, my mm -hmm. what a lucky person you are. Uh, my husband never uh, brings me flowers to home. Mm -hmm. Le dice la balabaya, por este boqueto de rosa. Cale uh -huh. que este. I had a inline. Okay. Por este buqueto de rosas, cale que este noche entera con las piernas abiertas. <laughs> okay. So, what does the host to say? says that uh, in order to dissolve that bouquet, you have to open uh, your legs. I you have, have to say. I have, I have to be the whole night with my legs open. Ah, so, cale que este. Okay. Cale que este. I have to be the whole night with my legs <laughs> open. Yes. Okay, le, re, le responde la amiga, ¿por qué no, <laughs> no tienes vaso en casa? <laughs> Why? You don't have a vase in your home? <laughs> okay, she's, she's a bit stupid. Una arbole, un arbole. La amiga está un poco, sí. Torpe. Torpe y que torpe, sí. Okay. okay. So who did I say was going to read next? Thank you, Debbie. 
baby, I think, yes. Sibel, yes, go ahead. Unmute yourself. Las, las rosas del marido. Dos amigas están asentadas llevando cartas. En su pito viene el marido de la balabaya con un grande buqueto de rosas. La amiga le dice, ¿qué más al grande tienes tú? Mi marido nunca no me trae rosas en casa. Le dice la balabaya, por este buquete de rosas, de rosas cale que este, que este noche entera con las piernas abiertas. Le responde la amiga, ¿por qué no tienes vaso en casa? <laughs> ok, yeah, that's a good one. I like. Ah, yes. This uh, is an anecdote, but the title is uh, a very famous proverb, actually, or a dicha, or, or Vini papa vos ambezare a zerijos. Now, this is usually said to kids uh, who think, usually teenagers, uh, who think they know everything and they kind of uh, go and try to teach their parents what to do or, you know, give, give lessons to their parents. And then the parents say, hmm, you know, vini papa vos ambezare, oops, azer ijos, meaning, Come, come, daddy, I will teach you how to make kids. Um, so uh, there's another, actually, there's another saying that uh, kind of equals this one, and I will teach it to you another time, but it goes like this. Se levantaron los pipinos a jarvar el bachevan, meaning the cucumbers no, no, no. Have, all, have all risen up and to, to um, beat up uh, the gardener. Uh, so um, it's it's a really nice one. Okay, Riva Nachmias, she put up her hand, so go ahead, read it. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Riva? We can't hear you. Unmuted Emmy, I think. I can I can hear now. Unmuted Emmy or Zoom. Come on, you can't. Okay, no. Now I now I'm good. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Okay, no problem. Um, Go ahead, Liv. Okay, so una criatura chica de cuatro años la demanda a la madre. ¿Cómo nací yo? Le dice la madre. Question, your typical question of little kids. But first, How read, was I the title. read the title so you know you can learn it because it's an important proverb <laughs> or an important okay. dicha, an idiom. Vini papa. Vini papa. Vini, Vini papa. Come. Vos empezaré a hacer hijos. Ok. Una, so, una criatura chica de cuatro años le demanda a la madre, ¿cómo nací yo? Um, a child of uh, four years old ask his mom, how was I born? Le dice la madre, truche un huevo, me asentí encima, se rompió, Isalites tu. Uh, his mom said, I brought an egg, I sat on top, it broke, and you came out. La criatura le dice a la madre, Mamá, en tiempo vuestro, no durmiasen juntos? The <laughs> child <laughs> said to the mom, Mom, at your times, you wouldn't sleep together? Yeah, you know. Yeah. So he really knows what he's talking about. Yeah. And the mom, well, okay, she's got to learn. Somebody else would like to read this? Sima, 
Didn't you read a little bit before? No. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Vini Papa was embezzare azer ijos. Was embezzare azer ijos. Azer ijos. Una criatura chica de cuatro años le demanda a la madre como nació. Le dice la madre, truche un huevo. Truche. Hace... Truche. Truche. Truche un huevo. Me asentí encima, se rompió, salite tú. La criatura le dice a la madre, mamá, en tiempo vuestro no dormías en juntos? Yeah, I'm sorry, one keeps. Go ahead. So let's see. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's a very good one. <laughs> it's an excellent one, actually. Uh, I think this is the last of our anecdotes. Um, so who would like to read this, this one? Some hands. Stanley, go ahead. <clears throat> and then Jane Mushabak. Unmute yourself. But you have to play this. Okay. Let's see. Entre hombres. Dos entre, no, 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 entre, no, it's not entre, this is not French. It's entre hombres. Entre hombres. Okay. Dos amigos. Edadados. Edadados. Dos amigos. Dos. Se encontran. Me dice el uno al otro. Como está el hecho. Okay, so let's see. What does this mean? Two so, friends um, two, agree to meet. Uh, elder, elderly friends. Aedados. Yeah. Elderly. Met, elderly. Or, or met or friends. See, they, meet they meet together, right? Yeah, they meet. One says to the other, "How? What is your work?" No. Well, oh, here, oh. here, how is the thing? He wants to make, he wants to know how is the thing the here? thing okay okay como esta el hecho how is your well, when he means work he means that thing he means sex actually <laughs> okay Lo responde a su amigo nada se murió y ande ti so no no, no no what is what is going on all right, the anti friend responds to um, nothing. Da dead. Dead, right? it's dead. Dead. And, a and, t and you? Yeah. Once a year. Una vez al año. Okay, once sí. a year. Mm, sí. Okay. ¿Y de qué estás bailando y cantando? And so, how come... Why? Why How come you are dancing and singing? Right? Yes, yes, go ahead. Es hoy, es hoy. Es hoy, es hoy. Es el día. Yeah. So, it's today, it's today. Yeah. <laughs> so, one no, thing, it's, it's today, it's today. Sí. <laughs> I like this one. Okay. Who else is, who else wants to read this? Very good, Stanley. Who did I say? Jane, Jane, yes, Jane Mushabak. Yes, go ahead, Jane. I know I'm not, yeah. Entre yes. hombres. Dos amigos a edado se encuentran. Le dice el uno al otro, ¿Cómo está el hecho? Le responde su amigo, Nada, se murió. Y ande ti, una vez al año. ¿Y de qué estás bailando y cantando? Es hoy. Es hoy. Es hoy, es hoy. <laughs> okay. Very good. Very good. So how did you like all these anecdotes? Nice, huh? Hilarious. The whole book is hilarious. Okay. Now here is an absurd song, really. Uh, so it's, again, it's uh, gossiping about the daughter La Ija de la Vizina, 
the daughter of the neighbor, que se llama Carolina, whose name is Caroline, en corriendo se cayó, running, in, while she was running, she fell. La tripa se le unfló, and her belly got swollen. Al hospital se la llevaron, they took her to the hospital. Operar la operaron, so they operated on her. Grande fue el caso, so there was a big scandal, because un gameo le quitaron, they took out a camel. So most probably they, <laughs> they meant to say, they took out a camel. Well, you, you know what I said before about Rameo being a very stupid person. So probably they also meant that, that they took out a very stupid person. So let us sing that together, if you like. Come on. What is going on here? Okay, I'll sing it for you. I don't need the music. <laughs> okay. La hija de la vizina osasa. Whoops. What the hell? Okay. There you go. Ah, all right. Loading. Okay. Okay, let's see. Um, la hija de la vizina osasa osasa que se llama Carolina osasa osasa en corriendo se cayó osasa osasa la tripa se le unfló osasa osasa al hospital se la llevaron osasa osasa operarla operaron osasa osasa Grande fue el cabzo, osasa, osasa. Un gameo le quitaron, osasa, osasa. Try to sing with me. La hija de la vizina, osasa, osasa. Que se llama Carolina, osasa, osasa. En corriendo se cayó, osasa, osasa. La tripa se le unfló, osasa, osasa. Al hospital se la llevaron, osasa, osasa. Operarla, operaron, osasa, osasa. Grande fue el caso, osasa, osasa. Un gameo le quitaron, osasa, osasa. <laughs> okay, so you see, we have, we have uh, quite a few of these very absurd songs as well. <clears throat> so this was one of them. And uh, what else? Let's see. Oh, yes. So you have all these juicy uh, reading materials and uh, books and music and everything in istanbulsephardiccenter.com. And that ends our fun class today. Um, after the next five classes, if you like, I will do another one, another fi fun, fun one, or after two classes, if you like. Uh, just let me know your preferences and um, we will talk about uh, maybe blessings this time, good words and nice words, uh, which we also have. And after another two classes, we can do a lot of, um, you know, uh, proverbs and idioms. I mean, we have, <laughs> Um, wonderful, wonderful. This is um, a culture where uh, we have uh, an idiom, a, a proverb for every kind of situation. Um, so I really would like you to get into this uh, beautiful, beautiful, um, picturesque culture with me. Uh, because this is, I mean, this is what the language is for. Okay. So I'll see you all next week. Al vermos la semana que viene, el miércoles. Y al vermos, queridos amigos. Chao, chao. <laughs>